programme is that it shows that there are two, um, but we are lucky just to have Wayne Lamar, um, who is um, with Liberty Science Centre in Jersey City. Um, Wayne serves on the advisory committee of the um, Getty Leadership Institute and he is going to speak to us um, about the tall tales and I believe it is a presentation about a paper that he wrote um, about um, exhibitions on skyscrapers. Thanks very much. There we go. Good afternoon. Thanks for hanging out for the very last talk in the graveyard. Um, so, uh, my talk today is really about the heart of the field, the, a subject that I don't think the field talks enough about, and that is how the field actually interprets its work to the general public, because I think it's pretty critical that all the people who actually um, work and live and draw national or local identity from the very buildings that we all talk about at these conferences, actually uh, that the field think about how they are being presented and looking at a sustainable future, how they will be presented and what forces in society may uh, have the two of them come together. So, Hugh Perman, Perman in a review of the Sky High exhibition, summarized potentially the standard, I would say, in presenting skyscrapers to the public. He wrote, quote, if you're going to do a show on skyscrapers, there are two ways to go about it. You can present each tower as a totemic object, a crystalline sculpture, or you can say, nuts to that, let's pile them and see how they all get along with each other. Um, this quote points out how skyscrapers have predominantly been presented primarily through the form of architecture. Meanwhile, you should know, in the museum field, leading thinkers uh, have been thinking about where the museums are going, and, and Harold, Scramps, Harold Scramstad summarized some of the leading thinking museums by saying, in the world of the future, every institution, including a museum, must be judged on its distinctive ability to provide value to society and builds on unique institutional st strengths and serves unique community needs. This means that skyscraper exhibitions, the interpretation of your work, or in other words, uh, th will find itself increasingly measured by its relevancy and how it address community needs, which is actually very similar, I would say, to, the, to how your work will be measured. What does this mean? Well, let's look at a quick evolution of skyscraper exhibitions. Exhibitions about skyscrapers arrive first as an exploration of the architectural form and the resulting urban context they might construct. With few skyscrapers in the late 20s, the idea that exhibitions would focus more on the potential form of these buildings and the city they might create was logical. Some of the earliest and most influential shows were created by and around the work of Hugh Ferris, the famous delineator and architect. He, he helped to create the shows The Titan City and Metropolis of Tomorrow. His work in both of these shows focused on the 1916 New York City zoning laws, which called for setbacks in the towers that were to be erected. By creating these renderings for publication, he showed architects and the public a way in which to imagine the future. For example, he talked about the advent of glass to be utilized, quote, not simply as windows, but as walls. He wrote, the utilization of upper levels by external lofty terraces, which can be, which was an interesting result of the setback regulation, and the inclusion of planted, quote, hanging gardens. These three might point to curtain walls, external decks, and sky gardens. This type of exhibition that explores the future architectural possibilities continues through to today. One of the most recent being Max Protech Gallery's A New World Trade Center. Here he invited many of the world's leading architects and artists to envision what they would use the World Trade Center site for. The show portrays, as did the Ferris work, 
the possibilities and futures that the tall building field can create in the urban context. And in, in addition, this show literally addresses head on the political, cultural, and emotional context of what tall buildings can do. In fact, this exhibit certainly influenced the process in the New York City area by which how the World Trade Center site was developed, pointing, I think, to a future of how exhibitions and the building field can work together. Potentially one of the most common exhibition themes has been one of the retrospective concentrating on a single structure or portfolio of work looking at skyscrapers, predominantly, as art, predominantly in the architectural form. Just one example is the recent Prairie Skyscraper Frank Lord Wright's Price Tower Exhibition, which marked the 50th anniversary of this building. As with other shows of this ilk, common aspects included drawings and models uh, and artifacts that interpreted the project, the architect's intention, and the history of the building. The exhibit places its relevance on the on the, particularly on the architectural world as it looks at a seminal architect and his one and only skyscraper project. A more prospective version of this is one that looks at current or future projects that are on the books or at least designed. Once again, their context is probably one of architecture. Probably inspired by the eighth Venice Biennial Architecture Exhibition, one of the first recent shows of this ilk was the Sky High Vertical Architecture, an exhibition by the Royal Academy of Arts. This happened to be curated by Sir Norman Foster. As Hugh Perriman noted earlier, Norman Foster placed over 60 projects, quote, cheek and jowl together to create two fantastic cities and show it a look that was historical as well as one that went across the planet and created two cities, east and west. A more recent example of large projects put together, more futuristic, was the show at the Museum of Modern Art called Tall Buildings. Once again, these projects were presented in an architectural context, but the 35 projects were chosen were, were, were considered through the following aspects of technology, urbanism, and program. These projects came across from around the planet, highlighted recent and future projects that demonstrate the innovation that is occurring in the field. Themes brought forward included earlier notions seen in other exhibitions of a skeletal frame uh, and the idea of being sheathed entirely in glass, in addition to other themes as green technology started to make an appearance. With tall buildings as a bridge, increasingly exhibitions about skyscrapers are being interpreted now through the advancements in engineering and structure that are occurring. While there may be architectural excellence in the projects, it is really the technological advancement that is being emphasized and interpreted. Big and Green was certainly one important landmark in this type of exhibition. Created by the Building Museum in Washington, D.C., this exhibition was the first to bring major attention to the green building movement and tall buildings. The exhibit focused on 50 large buildings and structures worldwide that exemplified advances in sustainable architecture. Big and Green provides a glimpse of what is possible through this, this advancement. It was divided into five sections. Energy, light and air, greenery, water and waste, construction and urbanism. Founded in 1986, excuse me, 1996, the Skyscraper Museum is devoted to the study of high-rise buildings past, present, and future. And it really brings together and culminates all of the species of exhibits we've seen here already. It has had over 15 shows to date, and through its exhibitions, the museum has explored tall buildings as objects of design, products of technology, sites of construction, investments in real estate, 
and places of work and residence. It really has run the gamut. This is evidenced by its current show, uh, New York Modern. If this just looked like a flashback to earlier in the presentation, uh, don't be, that's uh, pretty appropriate. Because the exhibition looks at, through images and artifacts, at the uh, imagery of the future of New York. And the Ferris drawings here play a prominent role in this experience. Differing from the heavy reliance on an only image, model, and occasional artifact, the latest species of skyscraper exhibition emphasizes visitor action and physical engagement. It includes some rather large, iconic experience as well that put you in the shoes, or rather the boots, of construction workers or engineers. So you can walk a beam of steel 18 feet in the air, you can experience a curtain wall test with hurricane force winds and rain. Or you can operate a real crane simulator that is used to train crane operators. As an important point about these experiences is that they first extend the audience from what have been coming to skyscraper exhibitions to a much larger age range from 5 to 95. They're, expressed, they're expressly action oriented to have people think about getting involved with their local buildings, understanding them, understanding them more, looking for green opportunities, or possibly even taking a career in the field. And it brings the entire story of the cultural and everyday context of tall buildings directly to the people. But what is next and the future in skyscraper exhibitions, and how might they work together with the field? In a prior World Congress, I mentioned several trends that are present in our populations, uh, both for museums and the field. One is that in, there are just certainly more and more people affected by tall buildings every day. In the developed world, there's an incredible aging population who tend to be, uh, data shows, to be more politically active. All over the world, there's, an there's a jump in educated young people. Uh, who are also eager to be involved in issues, especially those of the environment and sustainability. And a growing trend through other uh, technologies for us to be active participants uh, in what can be called a learning society. With this in mind, we certainly can say very easily in future exhibitions that much like in Skyscraper Achievement and Impact, that we will see skyscraper experiences have much more interactivity that it benefits uh, both museums as well, I believe, the building community to have more people, broader age, larger audience, uh, becoming to understand these buildings. That, the, that inside these exhibitions, that relevant issues will be embedded in them. And that the content will be covered, will expand beyond architecture. It will include engineering, science, and technology because it is in these areas that that impact is seen most readily. Beyond that, there is more to merge, though, in exhibitions. And the first, I would say, that I think actually points in, so coming, coming to my conclusion, uh, is visitor-constructed ex exhibitions. In the explosion of communication and internet that we have today, the ability for the general public to actually not just absorb or buy product, but actually to create product, is around us all the time. Things such as Wikipedia, iTunes, YouTube are all examples of where the general public has become involved in the creation of content, and they like it. Just a quick example of uh, where, where that comes to play, and this is in the web page for uh, the exhibition Skyscraper at Liberty Science Center. This is the On the Horizon exhibit. And if you choose one of the options on here, um, I think it's over here, this button here, you come to this page, which we, all, we invite people to document their own, the construction projects going on in their neighborhood and share their thoughts and uh, what they're seeing going on in their cities about skyscraper construction. So certainly this kind of concept is, is going to, I think, emerge more and more as an opportunity for people to actually be engaged in what we do. 
leading to what I would say is an opportunity uh, to be explored and to be understood since it hasn't even started yet, the idea of visitor constructed buildings. This doesn't obviously mean that they're actually building the building or designing them per se, but somehow their involvement in the process uh, cannot be uh, underestimated in any way as other trends in our society push us to involving the general public in other ways. In conclusion, Stephen Weil, who recently uh, passed away, one of the foremost thinkers of the museum field wrote, quote, the establishment and operation of a museum slash exhibition is not an end in itself, but is only justifiable by the museum's dedication to one or more public purposes. Museum exhibitions, museums slash exhibitions, matter only to the extent that they are perceived to provide the communities they serve with something of value beyond their mere existence. I believe that this statement also holds true for buildings. And I think that in the future, as we all go into a bolder and taller future, that there's a partnership between exhibitions and skyscrapers that needs to be looked at, examined, and utilized in a much more proactive way. Thank you.